This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Why did Ash never come back for Pidgeot? Ash telling Pidgeot that he would return for him and then never returning for him has been a sore spot among fans for over two decades. But did Ash actually promise to come back for Pidgeot or did the English dub deceive us all? Or did it not? The answer is pretty interesting, so let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? You know the story. Ash caught Pidgeotto in episode 2 of the original series. They traveled together, they battled together, and in order to protect the Pidgey evolution line flock outside of Pallet Town from invading nasties, Pidgeotto evolved into Pidgeot to smash bird faces in, break bird legs, and thereafter stayed on as the flock guardian while Ash traveled on to the Orange Islands. It was a tearful goodbye after about 80 episodes of wild adventures together, but Ash reassured Pidgeot and Pidgeot stands with the following words. We'll be back as soon as we get Professor Oak's Pokeball. See you soon, Pidgeot. And then Ash left Pallet Town, retrieved the GS ball, messed around in the Orange Islands for another 20 episodes before bringing the ball back to his mom's boyfriend and leaving again to Johto. And oh yeah, never ever coming back. For Pidgeot. In fact, Ash has returned to Pallet Town many times over since Johto, met up with various Pokemon from earlier seasons, and yet he has never once gone to the forest to look for Pidgeot. Sad Pidgeot. Understandably, many fans have felt betrayed by Ash's hollow promise and the writers have never lived it down. So is Ash a heartless jerk or is there more to it? Over the years, many internet folk on Reddit and other forums have smartly pointed out that Ash's promise may have simply arisen from a mistranslation of the original Japanese dialogue. But did it actually? This sentiment has always emerged as little more than some poster's opinion or as an internet truth apparently confirmed by someone's imaginary Japanese uncle without a direct reference to or explanation of the original Japanese text. So here is exactly what Ash actually says to Pidgeot in their final scene together in the dub compared to the original with a more literal translation of the original dialogue provided by the research team. An additional set of evidence that no one seems to talk about and some further discussion of what it all means for our boy Pidgeot. Firstly, in the dub, just to make sure Firo doesn't do something sneaky and attack again, maybe it's a good idea if you stay here for a while and make sure the other Pokemon are safe. Okay, Pidgeot? And in our more literal translation of the original dialogue, that Firo might attack again. Pidgeot, stay here in the forest and protect the Pidgeys for me. This first bit is interesting. In the dub, Ash implies that Pidgeot should just stick around for a while and frames it as a suggestion, whereas in the original dialogue, he simply orders Pidgeot to stay there and take care of the Pidgeys like a boss man. No ands, ifs, or bird butts about it. Next up, in the English dub, we'll be back as soon as we get Professor Oak's Pokeball. And in our closer translation of the Japanese, we'll be back as soon as we finish our errand. This line is quite similar in the dub and the original, aside from the dub adding a bit more detail about the nature of the errand. Both lines suggest that Ash will be back, and when you look at the original Japanese line in combination with the preceding line, it does seem to suggest that Ash may be returning for Pidgeot. Sure, you could argue that he is saying he will simply be returning to Kanto, not specifically returning to visit Pidgeot, but taken in context, you could also infer that perhaps he is indicating his intention to meet up with Pidgeot. While the original script does have more of a goodbye forever tone than the in a while crocodile flavor of the four kids dub, Ash's intentions around visiting Pidgeot are unclear, and thus, despite what Charizard Fan 69's Japanese uncle told him, so far there isn't nearly as drastic of a difference between the four kids version and the original version as some people would suggest. And then there was this line, which is completely different from what is said in the original dialogue. In the dub, See you soon, Pidgeot. And in our closer translation, Pidgeot, do your best. Boy, oh boy. Was it really necessary to skew the meaning of this line so drastically? Clearly, 4Kids took a pretty big liberty with the translation by changing do your best to see you soon. And I feel like it's this line that fanned the firestorm to come. But at the same time, I do think that based on the preceding Japanese lines, anyone would have assumed that Ash would probably visit Pidgeot again after the Orange Islands. Well, 
aside from the fact that there was nearly an entire year of lag time between the original episode's release and the English dub. So, four kids probably should have noticed that he did not come back for Pidgeot after returning to Kanto with the Great Ball. But yeah, four kids kind of missed the mark with that one. But before we drop the people's elbow on them, I have to say that even in the Japanese version, Ash's intentions were vague enough to cause a stir in the Japanese Pokemon community as well. After saying I'll be back as soon as I finish my errand and leaving Pidgeot behind but never coming back has been a long-running meme among fans. When Ash and Pidgeot parted ways, he said I'll be back as soon as I finish my errand, but they never got back together. What do you all think about that? This is a sermon to someone who does not care about Pokemon. Ash, I'll come pick you up soon, doesn't go to see Pidgeot in 16 years. If you can go, go. You can't forget No Guard Hurricane. Pidgeot was worried about Ash, who hasn't come to pick him up for 16 years, so he went looking for him in Unova and Sinnoh, but they missed each other, and they could never meet. That's a bit tragic. Actually, he said, we'll be back after we finish our errand, so protect everyone in the forest, and not a word about going to pick him up. Given that there was some confusion around Ash's intentions regarding Pidgeot in the Japanese community, is it really fair to hammer four kids for their translation? Yes, it is. But more so than episode 81's See You Soon Pidgeot, they put another weird spin on a piece to the puzzle that, in the original script, closed down any lingering ambiguity about the Pidgeot promise 50 episodes later. Of course, I'm talking about episode 131 of the original series, Fighting Fire with Flyer. The scene in question unfolds when Ash first meets Violet City gym leader Faulkner, whose impressive Pidgeot had just maimed Team Rocket. So let's break down the English dub dialogue and the actual Japanese dialogue once again, but this time let's start from the Japanese side. To start with, in the original script, Misty says, that Pidgeot is huge, isn't it? And in the 4Kids dub, I've never seen a Pidgeot fly that fast. Okay, a fairly pointless change, but nothing mission critical. Ash then responds in Japanese, it's certainly bigger than the one I used to have. And in the 4Kids dub, yeah, and it's a lot bigger than the Pidgeot I I used to have. To which Faulkner asks, you had a Pidgeot? Or, oh, did you used to have a Pidgeot? So far these two scripts are fairly well aligned. Importantly, Ash has confirmed his release of Pidgeot in both versions, which was an important point. Thank you, 4Kids, for including that. But with that said, let the slaughter of the Japanese script begin. Japanese Ash goes on to say, Yeah, we were together until just a while ago. Due to certain circumstances, I left it in Tokiwa Forest, near my hometown. And 4Kids Ash says, Sure did. We even got into a battle with a Fero. It was attacking a whole Whole bunch of Pidgeot not far from Pallet Town. So, in the original script, Ash pays respect to the closure of a friendship, indicating that he and Pidgeot unfortunately had to part ways for a reason. But in the dub, he instead narrates exactly what happened in an on screen flashback, just in case audiences were too stupid to understand what was happening. He focuses on Firo instead of Pidgeot, and then, why not? he throws in a factual error just for fun. This is already a bit of a strange translation, but just to reopen some old wounds and sprinkle them with salt. Whereas Japanese Ash then simply says, I wonder how Pidgeot is doing these days. 4Kids Ash instead comments that someday I'll go back there and see my old friend. In place of reminiscing about the past, 4Kids Ash's words are twisted into an action statement, yet again expressing his intention to go and see Pidgeot. Something that isn't at all conveyed in the original script. But more importantly, unlike in episode 81, the Japanese dialogue here contains no vague suggestions that he may seek out Pidgeot. He simply recalls fond memories of a friend, and his retrospective gives the Pidgeot case a sense of closure. Oh, hey there. Before we put all of our findings together, I'd like to thank our friends over at Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators that is dedicated to helping you improve your skills while deepening existing passions and getting lost in creativity. And better yet, the first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare to get a taste of quality teaching on subjects that actually interest you, like drawing, 
making fantasy worlds, or speaking Japanese. I've taken so many great classes on Skillshare, but if you are interested in improving at drawing anime and manga characters, then I have to recommend Sensei, aka Dairo's Beginner's Guide to Master Face Drawing, Anime and Manga, in which Dairo will have you drawing better character faces in under an hour. Personally, Dairo's course has helped me draw female faces such that my anime women have stopped looking like me, and for that, I am very grateful. Anyways, there is a ton of your potential waiting to be unlocked on Skillshare and the value for money is really something special. So be sure to click the link in the description to claim your free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's wrap up our analysis of the Pidgeot Promise. To summarize our findings, back in episode 81, while the 4 kids dub certainly drummed up Ash's intention to see Pidgeot, there actually was some ambiguity in the Japanese script that some Japanese fans even interpreted as an indication that Ash would return to look for Pidgeot. So while 4 kids certainly doubled down on the promise angle, their interpretation of the writer's intent was fairly reasonable. On the other hand, in episode 131, 4 kids did follow the used to have a Pidgeot line, which was good but then chose to resurrect the Pidgeot promise when there was nothing in the source material to suggest that this translation would be sensible. In fact, the original script reads more like a goodbye letter to Pidgeot putting the friendship behind us at long last. A reunion isn't necessarily off the table, but it clearly isn't an item on Ash's busy agenda. So while 4Kids didn't bungle episode 81 that much, their translation of episode 131 was a little bit weird and probably only pissed fans off even more. At the end of the day, perhaps the Pidgeot in Limbo fiasco is not the most important story beat in the Pokemon anime, but it is something that has stuck with hardcore fans for the past two decades. And it's interesting how the initial ambiguity in the Goodbye episode, paired with some questionable translations, have no guard hurricaned the flames of rage and salt for all these years. Maybe Ash's initial half-promise back in episode 81 just slipped out like that to ease the pain of parting, or perhaps the writers actually did intend for a reunion after the Orange Island Island adventure, but the idea was ultimately scrapped, and so they decided to give Pidgeot appropriate closure 50 episodes later. Either way, I'd certainly love to see the return of Big Bird, since we haven't seen anything of him since the Pidgeotto flashback in black and white. Who knows, if Lucario twists his ankle, maybe Mega Pidgeot will take over as Ash's Mega Force in the World Coronation series. Then again, probably not. The real question is, does Pidgeot even need or want Ash to come back for him? As the alpha bird in the flock, you know he is finally getting the respect he deserves, getting the birds, and hopefully not getting any invitations to Thanksgiving dinner. But how about you? Are you sad that Ash never came back for Pidgeot? Or are you a Pidgeot hater? I'm curious what you think, and as always, let's chat.